Today's discussion will be presented in three sections since we are recording it for a radio broadcast on Federal News Radio 1500 AM. You're welcome to post questions and comments during the session and we'll try to answer them online. I'd like to introduce our moderator, Jason Miller, Executive Editor at Federal News Radio 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com. Welcome to the discussion today. My guests are Mike Wilkerson, the Senior Director of for End User Computing for VMware Federal, Frank Konechki, the Chief Technology Officer for the Air Force, Doug Nash, the Chief Information Officer at the Agriculture Marketing Service in the Agriculture Department, and Tim Thorpe, the Director of Enterprise Hosting Division in the Office of IT Operation at the Environmental Protection Agency. Gentlemen, welcome to the discussion today. Thank you. Thank you. Before we get started, let me set some context for our discussion. It's been almost eight years since the Office of Management and Budget kicked off its latest data center consolidation and optimization initiative. Back in February 2010, OMB said the goal was to reduce the number of data centers by 40% by 2015. Well, here we are almost eight years later, OMB has moved the goalpost, argued over metrics with the Government Accountability Office, came up with an assortment of approaches to classify, to reclassify, to reduce and consolidate, and finally to optimize federal data centers. Most recent memo from August 2016, former federal CIO Tony Scott told agencies to evaluate options for transitioning to provision services in the cloud, for migrating to interagency shared services or co-location services, or to further optimize their current data centers. For our discussion today, we're gonna to focus on the cloud option. The cloud presents new challenges, particularly as, it's, as data is moved off premise. Agencies need to rethink their processes and consider how technologies such as virtualization can help make federal systems more efficient and safer from attack. And of course, we have to mention the fact that data center optimization is a key piece to any IT modernization strategy. In fact, a major section of the White House's draft IT modernization strategy focuses on network modernization and consolidation. The section aims to remove some of the impediments that have stopped agencies from moving apps to the cloud. So how can agencies take advantage of the cloud, particularly hybrid cloud? Modernize apps and still keep data secure? Well, that's why we have our panel here today. You guys are gonna give us all our answers. So let's just start at the beginning. We're talking about IT modernization, but we're really talking about data center consolidation, optimization. Tim, I'm gonna to turn to you first since you're right next to me. Talk about EPA's efforts so far. How are you guys doing with this data center effort? Yes, uh, Jason, we are uh, making progress on our data center optimization initiative. Uh, specifically, we have been successful in closing 17 out of 34 non-tier data centers. Uh, as far as optimization metrics go, uh, closing those data centers has been instrumental in helping us drive towards achieving those optimization metrics specifically. We are having success with respect to our facility utilization initiative, server utilization, and PUE, which stands for uh, power usage effectiveness. So kind of all those green IT, all those Correct. all those stats, if you will, that's yes. really showing. And then the 17 of 34 non-tier, we have the whole tier versus non-tier issue Correct. too. So do you have tier data centers? Yes, but for this initiative, we are not required to close any tier data centers. We only have four, and we're allowed to keep those four open. And I think, I think that's been the push and pull with GAO as well, so that's a whole different, <laughs> we can go down that path later. Uh, Doug, let me turn to you. USDA also has, I, I remember talking to your CI over the years, and you guys have not only data centers, but uh, 17 or 18 disparate networks. You guys have a whole host of, of a, that path toward modernization. Talk about data centers. Yeah, you know, so uh, USDA, very large geographically uh, dispersed uh, department. Uh, we're doing a lot to modernize around IT. Specifically with our data center optimization, we, we've closed a significant, significant number of data centers over the last several years, particularly at our 2,700 county offices. But we still have 23 uh, non-tier data centers, 16 uh, tier data centers. We're working to uh, close many of those where, so that we can move to, we have uh, one enterprise data center, uh, it's our National Information Technology Center in Kansas City, uh, that currently does provide some shared services federal government wide. We've got a backup data center in St. Louis. And so our strategy is still a cloud first, commercial cloud first strategy uh, with our enterprise data center being the, the, the backup for that. It's uh, the primary services there, platform as a service that a number of our, that the USDA customers use. Specifically in my agency, we've got uh, uh, two data centers that we're looking to ultimately uh, close down to move to commercial cloud. So lots going on, um, but we're, I think we're making good progress, but still lots to do. Now, help me understand, because um, you have NITSI, 
and TIS, right. I guess, and, and they're providing some data center shared services for other agencies and right. USDA. Mm -hmm. And then, but you're also from an AMS, agricultural marketing service perspective, but more broadly as well, probably. Right. You're looking to go to the cloud for most of your storage and, and, and compute needs, or yeah, uh, kind of hybrid? <laughs> well, for a hybrid, you know, so at AMS, we already use NITSE to host uh, our enterprise USDA data center to host some of our mission critical applications. What we're wanting to do is to move additional uh, workloads to commercial cloud, because that is our first priority. Uh, USDA has established uh, both Azure and Amazon Web Services as our two uh, 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 core or uh, enterprise selected uh, cloud services, and we and department-wide agencies have started to move to that and uh, we're just getting started with that on the AMS side. Okay, so plenty to follow up with you. Yep. Now, Frank, talk a little bit about the Air Force. You guys have, uh, compared to uh, USDA and EPA, you have a much bigger uh, road to, to travel. To say the least. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the OMB initiative was actually merged together with the GIE initiative. So we're really using GIE as the way to do data center consolidation and the movement to the cloud. And as we progress down that path, you find there's lots of things we have to do. The major problem space has always been how you migrate all those 3,000 applications into a cloud environment. And that's what we're currently working right now is ways to actually do that. But we're currently in commercial clouds right now with software as a service. We are in, we're trying to determine what other clouds we're going to go into because DoD is having their own commercial cloud in their own Doden environment as well as the Army has already established theirs as well as, you know, we're talking with other people about doing the same thing. So the question is, as we progress out, we're going to have to start moving things to one of those component data centers. Now, the issue for us is that every base has its own data center, which is necessary for key critical applications that are existing at the base. You have to do mission no matter if we're connected or not to the network. So the idea is to put mission critical applications at the base in a virtualized infrastructure, which is a cloud, as well as keep the enterprise level applications at one of the commercial clouds or one of the DUD component clouds. One of the things about the, the move, those 3,000 apps, and we've talked about this quite often, is the, the and we'll get to this as the modernization side, but do you, do you have to s decide which cloud to go to first and then that, the modernization comes, or is it in parallel? It's, it's a parallel issue because you have to look at the engineering analysis of that application to determine what it actually needs, what other applications it actually com is communicating with in terms of databases and things, because you don't want to move an application to a particular cloud and then have it communicate continuously to other applications and other clouds or back to you know an Air Force base. You have to be careful what you do just because of the cost analysis you have to do on top of the engineering analysis. It's interesting, both Doug and Tim, you guys were shaking your heads like, yes, yes. absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so uh, we're, we're going to travel back around to that, but l let's bring in a, a Mike from a VMware. Mike, talk a little bit about, you just heard three different kind of perspectives, mm -hmm. everyone's in a different spot. T comment on what you heard, but also what you're seeing from your clients within the federal sector. It's, a, it's an interesting question. Um, as we talk about data center modernization um, and the move to the cloud, well the first core tenant of that and the biggest enabler of that was data center consolidation. The biggest driving factor that enabled that was core virtualization on the compute side, which we happen to know a little bit about Just over the years. <laughs> um, and it was a real easy ROI when you can collapse thousands upon thousands of physical assets into hundreds if not tens. Um, it's a simple math equation from that perspective. I think tapping on the, you can go to every federal agency, FFRDC, federal integrator, and not, there's not one that hasn't gone through some sort of effort. And that core virtualization, compute virtualization being the first tenant or enabler of that. Um, what that has led to over the course of the past 10 years is this third cloud platform era that we're in now, going to mobile cloud. Um, what we're seeing across agencies is exactly what you heard explained earlier. It's this combination of what can I do publicly, what can I do in a private cloud, in a community cloud, what can I do across both, do I have to pick and choose, what's my decision? And I think what we're seeing is, and I think what's been validated, it's not a one size fits all, rip a band-aid off and I'm magically in the cloud. We like to call it a journey because that's exactly what it is. It's, it's a phase approach, step one, step two, step three. The first big step, as I said, was that compute virtualization, <coughs> that data center consolidation. So now that sets up for the next two to three steps to really get to that end state of where organizations want to be. It's interesting you call it a third cloud platform. I don't think I've actually heard that. I've, over, you know, I've heard the hybrid and you've heard the public and the private. But when you talk third cloud, let's put a little finer point on that. You're talking, you said public and community. 
But you're out, so so what what's the third piece? Is it is it the private private public or hybrid? And that's the third. Well, actually, what we what we call third platform is you start m mainframe was your first platform. Okay. Platform two, client server. Okay, so um, using cloud as. Platform three, the mobile cloud era. Okay. Uh, things that are more mobile friendly, more it's it's really more about the application, the application delivery, and the services that go with that. Uh, okay, I, it, that's interesting. I guess I hadn't heard it that way, so it's it's a it's a great way. Uh, it's, it was a lot easier when we just had mainframes, wasn't right. it? Right. Yeah. Well, Not that I remember that, good but times. In a lot of good ways, times. <laughs> a lot of ways we're sort of back to that. It, it's exactly. <laughs> uh, let, let's talk a little bit about because I want to go back to something that Frank said because both Doug and, and Tim were, were kind of nodding their heads. When we talk about data center optimization and data center initiatives, this is also the leading down the path towards modernization. So, so let me start with Doug maybe a little bit. When you guys are looking at IT modernization and, and, and really apps modernization is really what we're talking about here, mm -hmm. Frank made it, brought up a comment about how understanding what your apps are, where they fit in parallel with the cloud. Are you guys starting to go down that path as well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, uh, I agree complete with Frank. With Frank, in the sense that um, you don't just pick a certain cloud environment without consideration in terms of the <coughs> application, the data architecture, and and its relationship with other systems. We are uh, one of the big efforts we have going on across USDA right now uh, with our new secretary is around uh, application modernization in terms of improving the customer experience uh, when they come to USDA. Right now, uh, uh, when customers come to USDA, it tends to be very kind of uh, agency focused. And what uh, the Secretary is wanting to do is to have a more integrated uh, experience, cut integrated customer experience, where you don't really even have to think about which uh, agency you're dealing with, you know, more kind of retail uh, experience. And so that's driving a lot of our application modernization in terms of uh, the platform we're using, uh, what cloud solution we use, and um, and then in terms of the priorities of which applications we're starting with, and one of the department-wide, one of the big focus areas is on farm uh, production and conservation because that touches uh, you know it's in 2,700 county offices across the country, so it's a kind of a key retail location for USDA. And, and let me, I'm going to go to Tim, but real quick, Frank, are you guys when you guys are doing your prioritization, are you guys taking a similar view, not necessarily of, of farm? Uh, apps, of course, but from the Air Force, which ones are most popular, which ones are most mission-centric? Some of those, yes, but sometimes you have to look at the contracting relationship that they have and who's doing the contracts and when the contracts are up and when does your budget look <laughs> like. So uh, there's more than just saying, here's my priority, because I may have to say, this is this is my priority app, but I can't move it because its contract's not up or I, I have to, but I have three others that I have to move now, even though they're not the highest priority just because of the contracting issues. Okay. And Tim, let me jump over to you. Talk a little, you obviously when Frank initially talked about this, he was, you kind of nodding your head too. Talk about the, the app side, the, the modernization piece. Yeah, so with respect to applications, what we're finding is that uh, it is very difficult in a lot of cases to move legacy applications to the cloud. And as Frank discussed and Doug touched on it as well, uh, there's situations where you have tentacles where the application is reaching back into other legacy applications. So it requires a lot of effort in looking and understanding exactly what you're having to deal with. Frank also just touched on the fact that there's a timing aspect of it, right? Contract, uh, getting in uh, aligned with the re uh, life cycle refresh uh, such that you don't have what I call sunk costs. So right. we have uh, taken the time to look at trying to divide applications into two what I call swim lanes. Uh, one would be the legacy applications and again that's a heavy lift and then there's the newly deployed applications and using the cloud first strategy uh, you should look at deploying those to the cloud right off as opposed to bringing them in-house and then looking at migrating them later. And when you talk about newly deployed apps, are we talking about things that are under development or that are being developed or something that is less than three years old or five years old? Things that are newly being developed that are uh, uh, suited specifically for cloud. Yeah. Uh, we want to tailor it that way and deploy it out there at the outset. Okay, because I was because uh, legacy is, has that word like mm -hmm. everything's legacy, right? You, today it's modern, tomorrow it's legacy. Now, so I wasn't sure if you guys were putting. It was been interesting to me if you said yeah anything that's been deployed or developed in the last three years or five years or something. So I wasn't sure if that's what you're getting to. Uh, Mike, jump in here a little bit and, and, and talk a little bit about the the application side of this because data centers are great. We can you know the, the Doug or Frank can say look we we're, we're 
green and we're, we're all our storage is you know 85% of every blade server is being used to its capacity but really it goes back to what can you do once you moved there so what's the application piece from your perspective and, and talk a little bit about that ultimately the application piece is probably the most important piece that's what that's what serves the mission that's what drives the mission that's what in in a sense that's what IT is here for to deliver that that critical application or set of applications and tools to the users regardless of agency, organization, et cetera. What we're seeing is that line of demarcation that I talked about earlier, where we just virtualized compute, networking, and storage has now moved further up the application stack to where it's now the endpoint in the application. To bring into uh, the complexity of it, not only is it the application, but it's how are the users accessing it? What are they getting to it from? Uh, tablet, smartphone, laptop, desktop. Um, you bring in the, the the mix of you know the legacy platforms. It just it doesn't make sense to to modernize those for what for one reason or another. Um, so what we're seeing is, and again I tie it back to the hybrid cloud approach, is that architecture it gives uh, federal IT the opportunity to, as we said earlier, you know sort of pick and choose. If there's a SaaS platform or a community platform application that's better suited to meet the need, you have the flexibility to do that. If there's things I need to keep in-house for whatever reason, I can do that. I now have that cross-cloud collaboration, both in terms of management and movability and flexibility that I haven't had you know, in five, 10 years. I think that's a key point that we're gonna pick up in the next segment, the SaaS platform, the flexibility. We're gonna take a quick break. You're listening to the panel discussion, Implementing a Multi-Cloud Strategy, sponsored by VMware on federalnewsradio.com and 1500 AM.